Picked up this engine from the junkyard for my 1991 Honda Civic Hatchback DX. This is a JDM D15B uh, engine. Alright, so this is my 1991 Honda Civic Hatchback DX. I'd been kind of going back and forth on whether or not I want to document this build or just build it and get it on the track as fast as I could, which is what I intended to do originally. But now that I've ran into some issues with the engine build, I'm going to start uh, documenting my build just because it slowed me down and I ran into a couple issues and or um, mistakes that I made that hopefully someone else can learn from, from maybe watching uh, this video. So I'll go over that in a minute, but for now, I'll kind of get caught up with what I've already done with the car um, so far. So as you can tell, got a half cage uh, or a roll bar, whatever you want to call this thing. It is removable. And got the uh, quick release clamps there uh, with the Allen bolts. I've um, got my Sparco grid seat and harness all mounted. And that's about all I've done so far. Engine is stock, still in the car. All right, so coming over here to the engine. Um, picked this thing up from uh, one of the local junkyards here in San Diego. And... Uh, didn't know much about the engine that I was buying, but I did uh, a little bit of research and I knew that I was looking for the D15B Japanese engine, uh, VTEC engine. So I went to the junkyard, found this thing, D15B, had the stamp, so I, I automatically assumed, okay, this is the engine that I need. I bought it, stripped it down, took it to the machine shop, had the uh, cylinders bored over, and honed. I had the crank polished. I have the head over here. Had it machined and a had a valve job done on it so it's fresh. Um, and then I started assembling this thing and got the pistons uh, in and then once I was fitting the rods around the crank journals that's when I ran into my issue. So I'll talk about that. So if you don't know much about a crank, you have your uh, main journals, which are these five, one, two, three, four, five. And then you have your connecting rod journals, which are these four, the ones on the outside, one, two, three, and four. So when I dropped this thing in the engine and I was connecting my trying to connect the rods around the rod journals because the rod goes around here and it clamps. Um, as soon as I put that on, they were just super loose and I knew that I had an issue. So went online, did some research, and it turns out that this is not the Japanese uh, or JDM D15B VTEC engine like I thought it was, even though it has the D15B stamp, um, I found out that a lot of these engines, especially in Japan, were stamped D15B, but there is a variety of engine that they stamp D15B, and this is actually the D15Z1 uh, fuel efficient VTEC engine. So what they did was they took a D15B block and they took the crank from the D15Z1 and they put it in there. And they also took the D15Z1 head and attached it. So I knew nothing about the head or what to look for until I did a little bit more research. So I had this thing, like I said, all machined up, got some money into it, did some research. And then sure enough, 
P071-1 is the stamp for the D15Z1 head, which means that they built this thing for fuel efficiency and this thing is not gonna make any power. So I'm gonna have to sell this thing, uh, pick up a D16Z1 head, and then I also had to sort out the connecting rod issue because like I said, these connecting rod journals are smaller these are a 45 millimeter diameter and the uh, the JDM D15B has a 48 millimeter diameter so that's why they were so loose so already fixed the issue with the rods I just got them in um, coming over here these are my rods by P2 P0 I think it's performance 2.0 um, that company actually makes rods for a USDM D15B. So got kind of lucky there. I think they're actually the only company that makes uh, connecting rods for this specific application. Well, hopefully I explained that well enough to at least get an idea of the issue that I ran into or the mistake that I made. Um, that could have been obvious for someone who's built a lot of Honda engines, but to me, you know, I saw a D15B and I was like, oh, good to go, you know, pick it up, get it machined. Um, so ended up costing me some money and some extra work and time. Um, so hopefully this will help someone else out from making the same mistake that I made. And uh, I'll get more into it when I go to put this thing back together. Okay, I managed to make a little bit of room for uh, these rods. Let's go ahead and unbox these things. All right, so let's see what we got in here. I think rods, but let's make sure. I can already tell uh, this diameter is much smaller than the other rod that I was trying to put in there, those manly rods. But let's give it a quick little check. So inside diameter should be around 45. Ah, should be around 45. So yep, I don't know if you can see that, but 45 is right there. These are not precision calipers, but it gives us a good idea that these are indeed going to fit. Here's another look uh, at the rod, uh, unpackaged. Um, they don't look as beefy as the manly rods. Um, they still feel decent quality, um, but yeah, definitely the manly rods were definitely a little bit thicker. Um, but I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be making enough power to uh, have any issues with these rods, hopefully. So yeah, they look good. And uh, they're supposed to be balanced within plus or minus uh, one gram. So that's the same spec that uh, manly rods and like Vitara's uh, fall under is plus or minus a gram. So we should work out great. Now that I'm pretty confident that those rods are going to work, uh, let's th get this uh, bottom end built. So some things I've already done is I've already gapped the piston rings. Uh, with the first ring, I went with a 0.09 or 0 0.019 and the second ring, I went with a 0 0.021. Uh, that was just due to some research and seeing what other people uh, were running. So that's what I felt comfortable with running for my ring gap. Um, and then I've also set the ring gap opposite on each side. That way we install them. I don't get any blow by. Along with the oil rings, I did the same thing. You just kind of want to make sure that those rings are on separate ends. That way... Uh, you don't get that blow by. So got those all gapped. Uh, they're lined up in accordance with the block. Um, and then with the girdle, 
Um, I've already got all the bearings installed in there along with the bottom end of the block, all the bearings are in. That way, um, when you set the crank in there, um, you can plasti gauge it, which I've already done. So all the tolerances are good. So next up is installing these pistons, getting the rods um, in there, clamped down, and I'm also gonna plasti gauge the uh, rod end of the journal. So I almost got all the uh, rods on all the pistons. Um, I find it easiest to install one of the cert clips on one side of the piston and then uh, to take your rod. And then that cert clip will catch it on the other side. And then all you have to do is install the other cert clip. All the pistons and rods are in and everything clears so no need to notch the block or the uh, girdle. Okay, I think I'm going to call it on this video. Got the bottom end put together. And uh, I'm waiting on the machine shop to uh, finish the head. And then uh, I'll put the head on and the oil pan and uh, button this thing up.